So, the first cool thing about WebOS, if you haven't used it, is the devices come unlocked. You don't have to jailbreak them. So, I'm in my device, root. Now, officially, in the SDK, we use Node.js for background services. So you can have your HTML app written in PhoneGap or whatever, but if you want to have some added functionality that PhoneGap doesn't expose, you can write services in Node, and these run asynchronously in the background. The built-in services, um, let's see, let me enter my, so this is BusyBox. I don't like BusyBox. Welcome to Ubuntu, there we go. I'm still on the touchpad. Much better environment. So here's the services. We got, we got some chat threader, SMS test, accounts, backup, calendar, contact syncing, all these various things. So this is what, this is what WebOS calls synergy. You, you add an account to your, your Google account and you change your contact and it just syncs magically on the device. It's in the background. This is all powered by Node. So I'm just gonna quickly look, show you one of these. We'll look at backup. That's a pretty simple one. So here's the prolog that loads it. This is JavaScript. Got some crazy futures here, database, foundations, palm call, that's all WebOS proprietary stuff. And then down here, the developer who wrote this already knew Node, and imports that require is Node's real require. So now we can get a Node module, that's cool. So then if we look at Wow, that's a little too big. Is that still legible? Alrighty. So, yeah, it's Node. Nothing interesting, it's registering for my backup service on my WebOS account. So, that's the official Node usage. Now I'm gonna show you some unofficial stuff I've been experimenting with, because I think that's a lot cooler. And if you want to learn about this, there's developer.palm.com. If anyone has more questions afterwards, I can tell you more. So, let me show you some cooler stuff. WebOS also has a PDK, which is a lot like Android's NDK. So you can write apps using C++. Who here likes writing C++? We got one, two, how about JavaScript, is that better? Yeah. What if you could do JavaScript without the DOM? Would that be cool? Like what if you had access to the hardware, to the accelerometer, to the, the GPU? You can. So here's what I did. Node, I compile so you don't have to. I wrote binaries to SDL. So here's all this nasty C++ code. Yeah, we won't look at this long. So let's see here, yeah. So that's, I think four thirds of the code, four thirds, two thirds of the code is just type coercions and type casting and trying to get things to match up with the, the right stuff. The actual logic is very little. The end result is, so this is my desktop, just a Linux desktop. Let me pull out, got some goodies here. Here we go, Logitech, Xbox controller for PC, USB. I bet you're thinking, what the heck does that have to do with mobile? Of course. This is what I get for changing stuff last minute. All right. So this is a full screen SDL game. It's got this crazy physics where the world moves you around and I think my axes are all messed up. And that's, that's written in JavaScript. So here's a cool experiment I found. So back to the touchpad. So I'm on my touchpad here. I'm in Ubuntu. So node with configure build, I'm building the node add-on. I just built that SDL add-on on the touchpad. 
So let's run one of the examples. Uh, we'll run chaser. And that doesn't work. No video device. And so I kind of said, oh, this is no good. But then exit the CH root. See node native 48, that will work. Samples, chaser. And it's a different game, but this is a node app running on my touchpad with the exact same source code as, as well, different, different app, but same library as I had on my desktop. Now what's cool about this is you could have a C++ version of PhoneGap that targeted the PDK, the NDK, desktop Linux, all these various things, but instead of having the browser and the DOM as your API, you could have Node plus SDL and OpenGL as your API. And that's really fun. Before I get into any more of this, does anybody have any questions? No, this is not what you're expecting to hear, I bet. Let's see, yeah. So here it is actually packaged as an app. I launched this from the launcher. It's got its own icon. It has five finger multi-touch, keeps track of all your fingers. And it's written in Node. I've got another one here, this one's called Inspector. And what it does is, using the SDL font library, I redirect a console log to the screen. And all of the apps in WebOS are running in one big WebKit instance. It's basically a browser, and your various cards are like tabs in a browser. And so what this app does is, it opens up port 5858, which if you've worked with V8, is the debug port. And you can do GDB style debugging on your JavaScript app. So it opens that, pokes a hole in the firewall using some, some APIs, and then it hosts Node Inspector on a local host, and then tells you your IP address is 10.103.0.161.4.8080. Yeah, good luck typing that. But if you do, you will have full Web Inspector on my tablet, and you can hijack any of my apps. So you probably shouldn't give that IP away. But the cool thing is, is this is a PDK app. This is a native C++ app, sort of except I did, it with, I did it with Node and JavaScript. So I guess officially right now, WebOS uses Node for background services. There's an official SDK for this as a framework where you create your handlers and it's got assistance and handlers and all this abstraction using futures and it's cool. And you can put apps using that in the catalog today. But since these devices are so incredibly open, you can just use Node, and this code is on GitHub. So on my GitHub, it's github.com slash creationx slash node-sdl, and you can just download it and play with it. And if you have a WebOS device, it's pretty easy to get it built and ran on there too, and I can help with that. So, is that time? Am I good? More? More mint? Cool. I got more games. Let me show you the one I did for my talk. What if you want to go super cross-platform? What if you want to target PDK, NDK, SDK, Android, iOS, desktop browser, desktop Linux, everything? You can do that because SDL's API and Canvas's API are very similar. So what I did, this is my OzCon talk. I'm not going to pull up the slides, but I will show you. What's a good light scheme? There we go. So this game here, this is just JavaScript. I'm requiring my engine, which is the abstraction. This engine runs on SDL and Canvas. And I tell it the size I want. I tell it the title. I tell it the icon. Create a bunch of sprites. It's this little sprite engine. And all of my Git logic is right here. And I've got a few other files. I've got my sprite class and my, my explosion class. And it's all just generic JavaScript. If I run this app, here it is. This is a desktop app. I can move my sprites around. I got the, there's the index ordering. And this is a native desktop app. So you can see here, there's my title, my game. And if you look down here, 
My zooming is not working. Where's my mouse? Look, you can't see it. Well, it's got an icon too. This is fun. I don't have a mouse. It did. Right, this will be fun. All right, no mouse. Let's open Chrome. Isn't that 8080? I thought it was. Oh, 3000. Crap. Here we go. The exact same app. Oh, there's my mouse. Running the exact same code, but running in the browser. So using this, you could target a whole wide range of things. You could have just a single binary that you ship to desktop games, or you could run it in the browser using, or using PhoneGap or anything you want. The key is it's all using JavaScript, and you just separate the abstractions as far as you can, write as much of your logic as you want in one common place. And yeah, I have a bunch more info on this if you want to talk to me later. Thanks. <laughs>